So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your Sony A7 III camera as an external webcam using a laptop, um, using just a USB C cable, something like this. I'm currently using the FaceTime HD camera, but hopefully by the end of this video, using your Sony A7 III and a USB C, you'll be able to have an image that looks something like this instead which I think you'll agree is much better. So let's have a look at how it's done. So the first thing we want to do is download three pieces of software. Uh, they're all free, no cost. The first one we're going to look up is Cam Twist. So head over to Google, type in Cam Twist. It's that top one there. Hit download now. 3.4.3, get it downloaded. Get that saved and installed. You might have to open up your security preferences, just you know the deal. Okay, then the next piece of software is Camera Live. So type that in, Camera Live. It's this first one at the top. We're gonna head over to this one here where it says 14 releases. We're gonna download this top one here, 13 Alpha. We're gonna hit the zip file get that downloaded, get it installed. And then the last, the third piece of software we want to download is OBS. That is the Open Broadcaster software. So click on that one at the top, download it for Windows, Mac, Linux. I'm on a Mac. Should download automatically. Get it downloaded get those three installed and then we're just going to want to take a look at the settings of your sony a7 III. so on your sony a7 III, you want to hit menu we're going to go across to the network menu we're going to go down to control with smartphone hit control with smartphone we want to turn that to off so hit off, and we're going to go over to setup menu, we're going to go across to our USB connection. Now here we want PC remote, PC remote, and that's it. That is your Sony A7 III setup ready to go, then we're just going to get it plugged in. So using your USB-C cable. You want to go and get that plugged into your A7 III, plug it into your computer, and let's go. Okay, so once you've got your software downloaded, you're going to want to open it up. So it might be in the downloads folder. I've moved mine to my applications folder. We're going to want to open up Camera Live. And your, your Sony camera, once you've plugged it in, should then be listed here. As long as you've got the PC remote setting in the USB settings on the camera should show up here. We then want to open up Cam Twist. Okay. And we're going to go down to Siphon. Press Select at the bottom there. And then across here in the Settings panel, we're going to go to Siphon Server and we're going to go down to Camera Live. And then it should say Active in the status bar in your camera live window. Then we're going to open up OBS and you should see something like this. In order to add the Sony a7 III camera, we need to add it in this panel where it says sources. So we're gonna hit plus uh, video capture device, go create new. You might want to call it A7 III. We're going to go down to device and we're going to hit cam twist. And then, there we are, hey presto, your video is now in this window. Now we can move this around and we can scale it too. So once you're in OBS, you can do all of this in here, okay? Now you might be thinking, well, no, this looks a little bit different to how you looked earlier. Um, so let's have a look here, shall we? That's how I looked. Here you go. 
Now I added some effects to the video, which will then be transmitted to your Facebook Live or your YouTube Live. These effects, like filters that I've put on to just kind of improve the picture a little bit to my taste, um, are transferred over to Facebook Live and YouTube Live, but they aren't carried over to Zoom calls or Skype calls. So it's gonna look like this if you're using it for a Zoom call or a Face, or not FaceTime, Skype call, Skype or Zoom, it's gonna look something like this. But if you want to use OBS to stream, so Facebook Live, YouTube Live, um, you can make it look however you like, something like this. So I've added a bit of contrast, changed my colors around a little bit. I've got a little bit more control over the details. So in order to do that, in order to change the details a little bit, we just wanna add a filter. So you can see here, you will have added, so let's go, let's do it here. Um, so you've added your A7 III into OBS. We're gonna go here and we're gonna hit filters. Then in effect filters, we're gonna hit apply LUT. Then you can browse for any of your LUTs. Now this is where um, it gets a little bit trickier. Generally, LUT files are in a .cube format. So uh, let's have a look here, where are my LUTs? Um, so something along the lines of this, yeah, .cube. So in order to use those .cube files in OBS, we have to convert them into a PNG file. Alternatively, there are quite a few pre-existing PNG LUT packs out there that are free. I can put them links in the description, etc. Um, so the ones I've used on here are just, I've got a pack of things, about 76 different um, LUTs. So you choose which one you're going for. So let's say the medium high contrast, I want to add a bit of contrast. There we go. I've added, and you can change the, uh, how much you want. It's amazing. You can, that's just no, no LUT, a bit of this LUT, full whack. So I think I've, I've used it about 0.7, something like that. I didn't want it too contrasty, but just to add a bit. You can apply multiple LUTs, um, so if you want to layer them up. So let's just pick another one. LUTs, LUT pack. So I think I added a little bit of Fuji. It's, obviously, it's, this is super pink. Now, I didn't want that, so again, I just brought it down, but I thought generally Sony's come a bit come up a bit green so I just added a little bit of pink into the image just to give me kind of better skin tones so there you have it so that's how we get that image um, using your Sony a7 III you can record that straight in to your desktop as well that's what I'm doing right now I'm using OBS to record through my Sony a7 III straight into the computer so I don't even have to take out the SD card, put it in, transfer the files, it's just going straight in. I can drag and drop this file straight onto Premiere, which is amazing. Um, the next thing we wanna do is if we want to stream with this image. So it's both Facebook Live for starters. So I'll show you my business page just so you've got it. I mean, there's, there's gonna to be tons of you that are already doing this, already doing loads of live videos. Uh, it's, but the button's just at the top here. Sorry, so you go live. Now it will automatically pick up. Oh, yep, yeah, allow. It'll automatically pick up your FaceTime HD camera. Um, but we're gonna to wanna to press this toggle at the top and say connect. Now, at, underneath here, we've got this stream key you want to copy that stream key so you can either you just click copy and then head over to OBS if you hit start streaming it will take you straight to the settings page or alternatively go to the settings click stream and then we want to copy so command V uh, and hit OK now we're gonna hit start streaming we head back to Facebook, it should kick into action. There we have it. 
there is the image on the Facebook page. Now there is some delay on the Facebook page. There is, there's always a delay in any live stream um, using a camera to Facebook Live. Um, just a couple of things to note here. Um, you might have set your settings in OBS to 1920 by 1080. That's fine, but you might have some event logs crop up where it says you should be in 720p. So you might want to do that. Also in your settings in OBS, the maximum you want to go is to six megabits per second. Um, and with your video frame rate, just match whatever your camera is set to. So my camera is 25 frames per second. So if you want to use this camera for a Skype call, open up Skype, get logged in, hit settings, audio and video. It's already noticed it there, but you just want to pick. So it will probably default to your FaceTime HD. You just want to use this little drop down menu here. Hit cam twist and there you have it. So unlike OBS, your filters aren't in Skype. Let's make this bigger. So in Skype, it doesn't apply filters, um, but you've still got a far superior quality image. So that's Skype. Let's have a look at Zoom. So open up Zoom. Um, now be aware, I'm using a slightly older version of Zoom. I tried it on the latest version of Zoom and it doesn't work. So you'll need to download the slightly older version of Zoom in order to use this camera. Um, but that's fine, that's okay, that can be done. I'll give you a link in the description. We wanna hit, hit settings, we're gonna hit video, and just like in Skype, so again, you'll probably have the FaceTime HD camera, you'll have this image for your Zoom calls, but instead, click cam twist, and there we have it. You've got this camera for your Zoom calls. Um, and there we go. So there you have it, guys. You can use your Sony a7 III camera as a webcam for Zoom calls, Facebook Live, Skype calls. You can use it for whatever you like. Just as another quick note, you might have seen I'm using a lav mic. Audio is just as important as video quality, sometimes even more important. Um, you can bear a kind of a bad quality video if the audio is great. Just so you're aware, I am using a Rode VideoMic Pro um, with the small adapter on the end, the SC3 adapter. Um, you can pick them up fairly cheaply and that is going straight into my Cal Digit uh, box. The Cal Digit box essentially is just a Thunderbolt 3 extender. It has an SD card reader, audio jack, headphone jack, USB 3, USB C. So it just basically expands the ports of my MacBook. So, and I can just plug my Rode VideoMic Pro straight into the Cal Digit, and OBS Studio picks up the audio. It's really, really handy. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up um, and consider subscribing to the channel. This is my first tutorial, um, but I hope it was helpful to you. If you want any more information, maybe you're a wedding venue or a wedding couple and you're thinking about live streaming, please do visit the website, drop me an email. I'll be happy to help um, and give you any information you might need. Cheers, guys.